Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to speak about steroids and whether they boost your metabolism. In particular, we're going to mention the rate relationship between steroids and the thyroid and from there we'll come to some conclusions about steroids and whether or not they boost your metabolism. So it's commonly mentioned on forums and just places you read up about steroids that when you're on a steroid cycle you need to eat more because your metabolism increases. So we're going to look at the science and see if that supports, if it, the science supports it. We're not going to include trend because it is quite well known that trend does interact quite distinctly with the thyroid. So we're going to mention other hormones or look at other hormones. So the question of steroids and their impact on th the thyroid and thyroid hormones has always kind of puzzled me because it's always been known in the community, steroid community, that there is some interaction with steroids and the thyroid. But no one has really characterized these, um, these interactions. If you look back on old forums on Teen Nation or something like that and you look at um, cycle recommendations, there's always one or two individuals that comment that you need to ensure your thyroid is healthy when on cycle, such as supplementing with iodine. And I just was curious about where this recommendation came from, as it seems that people think that, in fact, steroids cause transient hypothyroidism, where the thyroid becomes underactive as opposed to hyperthyroidism. This would mean that the your metabolism is actually lower than if it if you had not been on steroids. And I got thinking about this topic because of one case study that in an individual I know who had normal or borderline normal thyroid function. However, on starting TRT, their thyroid function became worse and they started becoming symptomatic. So I started to question what the interaction between steroids and the thyroid were. So let's look at the science. So there is surprisingly quite a lot of research on steroids and their effect on the thyroid. And we'll start this off by looking at a study done in rats. It's one of the lower forms of evidence, but it kind of sets the stage. And in this study, they tested different testosterone doses and, see, and looked at what it did to the plasma or blood levels of the thyroid hormone, such as TSH, which is the thyroid hormone that's responsible for stimulating the thyroid to produce T4 and then T4 is converted in peripheral tissues to T3 which t people call T3 the active thyroid hormone. So in the study they demonstrated a clear correlation between the dose of testosterone used and the impact on the thyroid. The higher your dose was, the worse your thyroid did, so it lowered your T3 levels as well as T4 levels. And it increased your TSH levels, which means that your thyroid's are not responding to TSH as well, so your brain has to produce more TSH to try to stimulate the thyroid but the thyroid isn't being receptive. So this paints the picture that steroids cause this, what people would call primary hypothyroidism. But let's see what happens in studies in humans. So in another study, they took 13 subjects, five of whom admitted to using steroids. Unfortunately, they could not intervene and give the individual steroids as it was not ethical. However, the uh, individuals taking steroids uh, bought them off the black market and they couldn't control which steroid they used. So some used 750 milligrams a week and some used two grams of steroids a week. And it ranged from testosterone to nandrolone to D-ball and Winstrol. And they excluded thyroid dysfunction first. So there were 13 subjects, eight were normal, five were not normal. They also did a TRH stimulation test. So this is essentially, this TRH stimulates the TSH response. And you know, the TSH comes from the pituitary down to your thyroid. And that makes you produce thyroid hormone, or T4. So in the stimulation test, they're essentially looking to see how your body responds to exogenous stimulation, to see if they're receptive, essentially.
So let's look at the results. So in this first table, this was just the basal levels. And if we look in the study group, those were the people taking steroids. You can see a noticeable difference, and that's that the T3 and T4 levels were much lower. However, free T4 levels, so that not bound to a protein, was the same. Which makes sense because the thyroid, the TBG, which is a thyroid binding or thyroid hormone binding globulin, or just thyroxine binding globulin, uh, was much lower, which means there would be more free T4. But since there wasn't that much T4, the numbers were identical. TSH also was slightly raised, however, wasn't significant. So as we can see, there is a picture of primary hypothyroidism, which is where the thyroid isn't producing enough thyroid hormone with the slight elevation in TSH. And after the TRH stimulation test, the pituitary was very receptive in the steroid individuals to TRH, which means that the pituitary is not the problem. It must be the thyroid that's the problem, and it appears the thyroid isn't receptive. But the research is mixed, because in an older study they showed something different. So in this older study, they looked at steroids again. They didn't compare it to a control group of people who weren't taking steroids. And again, the steroids were administered by the patients themselves. And they just looked at basal levels of these patients from when they started the cycle to the end of the cycle. So they followed them during the cycle, looking specifically at thyroid-related hormones. And these patients used anything from testosterone, nandrolone, Diebel, or Winstrol. So if we look at the results here, you can clearly see that during the cycle there is a clear dip of, um, in the T4 and T3 levels, and obviously the thyroid binding globulin levels. And this was noted to occur around the fourth week. What was interesting, however, is that TSH also dropped, which was different to other studies which said that TSH increased. This means that perhaps it would suggest that maybe the pituitary gland is being suppressed as opposed to the thyroid. That's why I say the research is a bit mixed. So this would suggest that perhaps um, there is a secondary hypothyroidism as opposed to a primary hypothyroidism. Secondary being that caused by the brain or the pituitary, or primary that being the thyroid is the problem. In terms of compounds being linked to thyroid or decrease in thyroid hormones, it's only really been shown in stenozolol, which is Winstrol. Winstrol decreased T4 and T3, with TSH and free T4 staying the same, which is more or less seen in the other studies. In another study, um, Nilvar or norethandrolone and Dianabol were used, and they also showed a similar decrease. So what can we conclude from this? Well, the TSH levels are inconsistent, some showing an increase, some showing a decrease or no change. However, what is known for sure is that T4 and T3 hormones are massively decreased along with thyroxine binding globulin. This drop in TBG, or thyroxine blinding globulin, has been referenced by individuals on forums as to the reason why the, your metabolism is boosted, because you get more free thyroid hormone. But as we saw from the study, free thyroid hormone was the same because the total thyroid hormone had decreased. So this would suggest that in fact your metabolism decreases when on cycle, especially using compounds such as testosterone, nandrolone, Diebel, and Winstrol. Trend is a different story, and I'll mention it in a different video. So what do I hypothesize from these results? And I'd like to know if you come up with any hypotheses. So essentially what I'm thinking is that when you take testosterone, your LH and FSH decrease. And the thing with LH and FSH is that they are similar in molecular structure to TSH and bind weakly to the thyroid gland. And if you're missing these, then you have less stimulation and less 
thyroid hormone. So I'd suggest that most individuals should take an analog of these when on cycle. That would consist of HCG and HMG, or recombinant follicular stimulating hormone. Furthermore, if it's not corrected by HCG, and I would suggest you t test your thyroid hormone levels such as TSH and T4 after four weeks as we saw that that's when they reach their lowest levels. And if they don't correct to HCG, this would perhaps mean you need exogenous T4 when on cycle because you don't want to risk the adverse effects of having low T4, which I'll mention briefly just now. So if you take exogenous T4, you should not necessarily need exogenous T3, since T4 is converted to T3, and we're assuming your peripheral conversion is fine. Furthermore, it's necessary to test your thyroid function because you might have high normal thyroid function, meaning that when you take steroids, you'll still be within range, however slightly lower, but you'll still be in range and then you will not need this treatment. So it's always important to know your levels. However, if your levels are low and you can't correct it with HCG or uh, recombinant FSH or recombinant LH, then you should perhaps treat it with T4, which is levothyroxine. That's the medication. So the issue is if you leave T4 to be low as it is, not only do you have the risk of gaining more fat or gaining fat more easily, you run the risk of having even worse lipids when on cycle, because T4 is well, thyroid hormones are important in the uh, metabolism of lipids, and your lipids will be skewed even more. Furthermore, for competitors who do not want to gain excess fat or lose um, energy when competing, it would be at least it would be very necessary to supplement or take exogenous thyroid hormones. So it seems that so it seems that steroids do decrease your metabolism through decreasing thyroid function, but this can be corrected, and there isn't much research on it. But I've hypothesized a possible correction to it, which isn't the gold standard. But there isn't much research on it at this point. Just let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.